I've noticed one problem with my kit so far, which might, I don't know, could uh, potentially stop me being able to complete the walk. But a little bit later on, I want to tell you what's come to me, what's occurred to me about this trip that may help you if you've got a vision of any kind. Okay, so welcome to my gear test. I'm in the UK, I'm doing some uh, speaking. Been at a Bible college yesterday doing the masterclass. So I've taken a couple of days with my son Levi. It's Levi, and we're uh, doing a bit of a gear test. So I'm gonna be testing out my tent, backpack, sleeping kit, yeah, everything really. So first of all, I thought I'd talk about my jacket. So 25 years ago, just to give a bit of context, I couldn't afford anything as uh, nice as this. So I just got the cheapest thing I could find, which was a polythene thin kind of raincoat. It didn't really work because whenever I put it on, when it rained, kind of kept the rain out. The rain did soak through a little bit. And worse than that, probably the worst thing about it was it was pink, pink. The only good thing about that was if I got lost on the mountains, they'd be able to see me from a thousand miles away. So what I realised I forgot to say about the jacket was I was moaning so much about my other one. But this one's brilliant. It's very airy. It's got fantastic vents. And in the rain show we've just been through, kept me completely dry without making me clammy. So that's why I gave it a thumbs up check. Boots. So much better than the ones I had 25 years ago. Again, I had no money 25 years ago, so everything I bought was cheap. And the cheapest boots I could find were these very stiff, very heavy mountain boots. They were designed for crampons for when you're literally climbing the mountain. These are lightweight, relatively waterproof, not totally. And uh, didn't take any breaking in at all, so they just immediately fitted perfectly. It's fantastic. No abrasions. My feet are a bit sore, but I don't know what it'll be like after 13 days, but one and a half days and it's okay. So other things about the gear that I've found out so far, walking sticks, got them on the back here, if you can see them. They never existed 25 years ago. I know they're supposed to be kind of like a walking poles, or you have to use them a bit to get used to them, but I think what I've found so far is that they aren't good for going uphill, but they're really good for going down the hill. They definitely save my knees going down here. We're stuck here. So we're gonna camp pretty quickly because some big weather's coming in apparently. So we're gonna find a nice spot. It's a beautiful area. And uh, if we can find a good spot, <laughs> that would be great. Chubby's wanna well try and get a spot before the weather comes in. Because I'm not sure if you can put the fly sheet up first with this tent. It's the first time we tried it, so we're gonna get it out quick. See if we can put the fly sheet up first. Ah, right, that's a good spot, lad. Now, Dad, we've got to make sure when we put things in, it's not wet. Yeah, exactly. So backpacks we keep outside underneath. What's, what's the deal with these? they got so much big ones in us. And don't wear your shoes in there too. Oh, no, no, no. And we'll always keep the vents down, I think. So there's the tent. So I bought this tent from uh, REI, almost half price during a New Year's sale. It's a two-man tent. In reality, it's probably a very large one-man tent. Um, so Lee and I slept in this last night, and um, it was great. It did really good. Um, no water came in at any point. So another example of how being able to afford something a bit better this time round than 25 years ago was good, because 25 years ago, the tent had no proper ventilation system. 
uh, whereas this one does. It has kind of netting. So the inside of the tent is a net. So there's no condensation whatsoever on this tent. And it has um, vents here. Didn't use it last night because it was torrential rain, but it does have vents there as well. So it's absolutely brilliant, yeah. So I think I got it for um, almost half price in a New Year's sale. And uh, just another example of how uh, a little bit of resources uh, help you do things better. Because last time I got absolutely soaked every night. Okay, so woke up. I had a pretty good sleep last night. Really good actually. It was torrential rain outside most of the time. So two things that didn't exist on my uh, throughout last time were these things. This is a kind of a lightweight, super lightweight blow up um, bed, really comfortable. Two things about this were good. One is it's super comfortable, so it was like sleeping on air, but also because it's a cushion between the ground and the floor, it keeps pretty warm because obviously last time I was sleeping on the ground with a foam mat and it was really, really cold. You could feel the cold of the floor in the body. Second thing was these super thin, super lightweight sleeping bags. I couldn't afford one of these last time. Um, but that was really nice. So I took a bit of a risk. I took, I got the lightest one I could get, it's the cheapest one I could get and the lightest one I could get. Um, so it's only really one season, but I decided to go for layers. So I had this. And uh, in the middle of the night, I got um, my uh, long johns on and I also got a hat on and everything was good. So yeah, these would be great for the through hike, I think. Uh, and right now it's October, which I think will be a little bit colder than when I do the through hike in May. I think Levi might have got a cough though. Anyway, there we go. So Levi and I just got up, put our tent away for about 10 minutes, pack everything away. We did pretty well, I think, before the rain came. Beautiful day, just mist everywhere. The one thing, the one bit of kit I'm worried about, the one thing that could really cause me problems is this thing. It's great to have all the technical gear that I couldn't afford last time, but it sure is heavy. So I think the frugal person in me decided that even though I wanted ultra lightweight gear, I wasn't prepared to spend the money on it. So the pack's pretty heavy. Probably about 45 pounds worth today and yesterday. Walk on the road, no problem. Climbing, really difficult. But the bag itself, fantastic. It's made by Deutsche, which is a German company. We've had 750 Germans on pays full time over the last 25 years. So I'm gonna call my back Uli in remembrance of the first ever German. It's a German bag, so I'm taking Oli with me on my trip. So this may help anyone who's got a vision or a dream. It's just a bit of advice, I guess. So obviously, started our organisation 30 years ago now. About 15 years ago, I got asked by a church in America to go and help them reach their community, particularly with young people. And they said, if you come to us, we'll help you with setting up an international headquarters. Didn't quite pan out that bit, but it's not a problem. Anyway, so when I'm there, I say, well, I can help you with the youth, but I, you know, I need to reshape it. And they said, no problem. And then they gave me the budget. They said, here's the budget for the youth ministry at our church. Now, bear in mind, up until that point, I'd never worked with a budget before. Uh, my MO was get a vision, get an idea, and somehow factor into the idea how to raise the money to do it. I remember taking 80 young people up a small mountain once and to be able to get the bus fare to get them there, I made the all carry the tuck shop, which was like the, the snack shop. And on the top of the mountain, we sold the snack shop and made a little bit of a profit to cover the fare to get them to the mountain in the first place, because many of them hadn't even seen a small mountain or being in the countryside. Yeah, so I get to America and up until then, everything I've ever done, I guess a factoring how I was gonna raise the money to do it. So they said, well, here's the budget for our youth ministry. I looked at it, it was three times the amount it was costing me to run pays in five nations. So around then I had, I don't know, 
100, 200 people on pays. We're in five nations running all sorts of projects on two concerts at the time. And I looked at the budget and I thought, oh my goodness, how am I going to raise this money? And I said to him, I said, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm up for it. I'll try and raise this money, but can you put me in touch with uh, people who maybe I could ask to, for help? And he asked me why. I said, well, to raise this money. I said, no, no, you don't understand, Paul. This is the money already provided. This is the budget from the tithes and offerings of the church that you will guarantee to have this year. <laughs> I remember exactly how I felt. Because what they were saying to me is, we can give you three times the budget or three times the money it costs for you to run pays to look after what the time was around about 60 young people who were already Christians, most of them. I couldn't believe it. I think it kind of highlights this whole thing about resource. And it's why I'm doing the through hike. We don't put value on what God is doing in schools throughout the world. We put a huge amount of value, AKA resource, into running our churches. Now, I've led churches. I massively believe in the local church. I've put many people in different local churches to help those local churches. But what, what it means to me is this, and to you if you're a visionary or you have a dream, when you have a vision, especially if it's to do something new, not doing something that everybody else is already doing. Take my advice. People will believe in you, but they may not believe in it. People will believe in you, but they may not believe in it. They'll love you, want to help you, but they might not get the vision. Which means that people will resource you maybe, help you out a little bit, but they won't resource it. Which means you're going to have to do it. Me and the Fox at Lynn use our own money for the first two or three years to start pays. Didn't get bare about it, didn't get annoyed about it. It's just life. So if you're a visionary and no one's sponsoring your work yet, that's probably because you have to do it in the early stages. Now, later on, we've got some amazing sponsors and helpers now, and it's amazing what we can do with some resources. And this trip is proving that to me. I've got wonderful friends uh, who have a business called Winwood Productions, and they're helping me out with this gear. And it's made this trip so much better than it would have been if I had to do it in the gear I used 25 years ago. So yeah, later on, resources may come. But early on, people may believe in you, but they may not believe in it. And you're gonna have to resource it while they may be help you out a little bit. I know it's a little bit challenging, but hopefully it'll help you because uh, if you know that little bit of information, you won't get angry or bitter or frustrated. You won't give up because you think things are going wrong when actually it's just part of the process. Okay, we're gonna pretty much sign off now. Oh, there's a little bit of sun over there, I think. It's been an interesting trip. Love walking around with my son, Levi. Don't see him, he lives in Germany, so it's been nice. Okay, 